let us uh, try to understand this uh, experiment which is on heat pump. So, what you need over here is a heat pump trainer. Uh, what is the objective of this experiment? Why are we performing this uh, experiment? What concepts we are going to learn? And what readings we are going to take? This is being explained in this short video. Uh, what you see over here is a test tree uh, of heat pump. What is a heat pump? Heat pump, conceptually I will be explaining later on the blackboard. Uh, what heat pump is, is it is a refrigeration system which is used to pump the heat from a lower temperature to higher temperature. Uh, the difference between a heat pump and refrigerator is a refrigeration system is used to lower the temperature or to cool the particular space whereas the heat pump is used to heat the space. So it works like a heater. Right? Now where do you find heat pumps in practice? In the real life, you find the heat pumps in colder climates like in European climates. And this setup which you see over here is basically to demonstrate uh, how the heat pump works and help you find the performance of a heat pump. When I am saying performance of the heat pump, I mean coefficient of performance which is COP, coefficient of performance. Now what is this setup? Uh, what you see over here is there are two heat exchangers. So there is one heat exchanger over here and there is another heat exchanger over here. Okay. So this heat exchanger, this heat exchanger is the place where the heat is rejected. So uh, in the heat pump, what we are interested in is in the heating effect. So where do we get the heating effect? We get the heating effect in this space. Uh, in this space, you will find that there, there are coils and in the coils, uh, please uh, uh, take a camera over here. What you see over here is there is a coil and the coil is immersed in water. Okay, is this clear to you? Is this visible? There is a, let me just go to a close up over here. What you find is there is water, okay, and the water, in the water, the coils are immersed. So, this is a place where the heat is rejected and the water gets heated. Now, how the water gets heated? That is because of the refrigeration system. So, as in your refrigeration system, there are two heat exchangers. This is one heat exchanger where heat is ejected and there is another heat exchanger where from the heat is absorbed. Uh, there is a compressor. Compressor will uh, change the pressure of the refrigerant and there is an expansion device. There is an expansion device. So you will find the same components as in the refrigeration system. Two heat exchangers. This is one heat exchanger. This is another heat exchanger. This heat exchanger means there is a box. In the box there is a water. In the water there are coils. This expansion device and the compressor would allow the system to work in two uh, pressure systems. Okay, a higher pressure system is the condenser pressure and the lower pressure system is the evaporative pressure. Okay, the other components which you find over here, for example, these two pressure gauges, they would help you record the conden condenser pressure and the evaporative pressure. So, as in your refrigeration system, there are two pressure gauges. They would help you record the pressures, the evaporative pressure and condenser pressure. You would find that there is an energy meter to record how much energy is to be consumed by the compressor. Then there is a flow meter. Flow meter would help you find what is the flow rate of the refrigerant. This system has a refrigerant. And now the question is how come uh, this refrigeration system help you calculate and uh, the coefficient of performance, how the refrigeration system help you heat the space. So for that, let us go to the blackboard. So what I am going to draw is a schematic of a heat pump. A uh, schematic of the heat pump, we understand by drawing two reservoirs. One is a higher temperature reservoir, which is pH, and there is a lower temperature reservoir, which is T. Higher temperature reservoir, pH, is the space which is to be heated. Space to be heated. Okay. So in our refrigeration setup over there, we are interested in heating the water. Okay. I am interested in heating the water. Water is being heated there. And how come this water is heated? This is heated from the energy which is coming from the surroundings. So the energy is coming.
coming from the surroundings. The surroundings could be the surrounding air, okay, or it could be the water, surrounding water. But all this, whether it is air or water, it is at the ambient temperature. Let us say closer to 25 degrees centigrade. And let us say you want to heat the water at some higher temperature. Let us say for bathing, okay. So 60 degrees centigrade you want to heat the water. Right? So what does the heat pump do? So the heat pump employs a refrigeration system. It employs a refrigeration system. And what is the refrigeration system? The heat pump employs a refrigeration system meaning that it has two heat exchangers. Heat exchanger 1, heat exchanger 2. It has got the compressor and it has got the expansion device. Okay. Now the heat exchanger 1 means this at higher temperature pH which is nothing but condenser and heat exchanger 2 which is nothing but the evaporator which is at lower temperature ok and in this system flows the refrigerant in this system flows the refrigerant so what is flowing in this is the refrigerant now what will this system do it will pump the heat from a lower temperature to a higher temperature this is QL and this is QH and this is possible by supplying electricity to the compressor. So we are supplying electricity to the compressor as a result of which this heat is removed and you get the heating effect. So this is the desired effect. This is the desired effect. You are interested in heating the water. Okay. And if you have understood this uh, schematic then you know that the performance of the heat pump which is coefficient of performance of the heat pump is equal to the heating effect how much water is being heated in our case upon how much electricity is being consumed, compressor work. Okay. So we need to measure how much is the compressor work, we need to measure what is the heating effect. And how do you do that in the setup that I am going to explain you shortly. Okay, you need to take certain readings to calculate the heating effect, you need to take certain readings to calculate the compressor work, as a result of which you get the coefficient of performance. Okay. Now the interesting point is why do we require a system as elaborate as this. Why do we require a refrigeration system for heating the water? You know that water can also be heated by simply using an electric heater. You take an electric heater, electric coil and heat the water. Okay, this is one way of heating the space. Take an electric coil and heat the space. But here what we are doing? We are employing a refrigeration system to heat the space. So what is the advantage of this? So the advantage of this you will understand by knowing the fact that the coefficient of performance of heat pump is greater than 1. Okay. So if you are having the coefficient of performance of heat pump greater than 1, you would understand that the heating, for achieving the heating effect, if you want to heat something, the electricity required would be less than the electricity which is consumed in the electric heater. Now let me explain you how this happens. Okay. This is very interesting. Let us say that the coefficient of performance is 3. You want to achieve a heating effect of 1 kilowatt. So how much is the electrical power consumed by the compressor? So the electrical power consumed by the compressor in case of heat pump, it is 1 upon 3. Do the calculations. You will see that it is 1 upon 3. If you are using the electric heater, if you are using electric heater and that electric, you want to achieve the, electric, uh, the heating effect of 1 kilowatt and even assuming that the electric heater has got 100% efficiency, you would require an electric heater of a capacity 1 kilowatt. So you understand that for achieving the heating effect of 1 kilowatt, achieving the heating effect of 1 kilowatt, the heat pump would consume only 1 upon 3 kilowatt. Whereas for achieving the heating effect of 1 kilowatt which is electric heater, the electric heater is going to consume 3 times more. It is going to consume 1 kilowatt as against 1 by 3 kilowatt. Okay. So this is the basic concept of the heat pump. That is the reason why heat pumps are preferred when you want to heat larger spaces. Okay, larger spaces, heat pump is used. So suppose in European countries, you want to heat a space, a big hall. In that case, you employ a heat pump. Even in our countries, you will find that uh, instead of using electric heater for heating the water for by bathing, and if the requirement is huge, you 
can employ a heat pump and save electricity. Okay. Now, how do you calculate? How do you calculate the coefficient of performance uh, in the trial that I will be explaining in my next video? Okay. So, thank you very much. Bye for now. See you.